Psalms 92 and 13. Psalms 92, 13. And then I'm going to quickly go right over to uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, but we're going to launch off of this verse in Psalms 92 and 13. It says, those who are planted. Everybody say planted. I'm, I'm just telling you, good things come to those who get planted. Emily and I and uh, the family, the kids, drove up to Amory, Mississippi. Anybody know where Amory, Mississippi's at? Way up yonder. And uh, the, the most famous thing about Amory is actually Emily's grandmother's apple fritters. If you don't know, I'm just telling you, it, 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 she's famous for it. Well, Meemaw turned 88, so we went up and I uh, celebrated Meemaw uh, yesterday, drove tur just a turnaround trip. Uh, but I was talking to Papaw, and Papaw's been in the ministry now going on uh, probably 55 years or so, at least. Been married, he's going to be married 70 years, so he's got some corn in his crib. And, uh, but he, he told me this, he said, he said, son, how's the church going? And I, I told him about you. I love to brag on you. I love it. And anytime someone asks me, even if they don't ask me, I just I brag on you because you're such an incredible church. And he told me this. He said, son, he said, you're going to get that church. He said, you're going to build that church. He said, because it's like planting seeds. He said, when you plant seeds, he said, they will come up. They will come up. And I'm just telling you today, the enemy thought that he was burying you. But I'm declaring to you today, you are not buried. You're planted. Come on, somebody. You're planted. Those who are planted, now, it, it, it matters where you're planted. Environment matters. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord. Here's the key word, shall flourish. Somebody say flourish. My Lord, if I was designing a t-shirt, I'd put flourish on it right now. I don't know if I'd be able to wear it or not, depending on what color you put it. But I want, I so desperately want you to flourish. I mean, just become all that God has for you. Be the best version of yourself. That's, that's my heart today. I want you to flourish in the courts of our God. And very quickly, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, then we're going to pray and I'm going to let you be seated. It says, therefore, therefore, anytime you see the word therefore, ask the question, what is it there for? It says, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Easter, we had five people baptized. We had so many give their life to Jesus Christ. I declare to you today that if anyone be in Christ, it's not just a temporary fix. It's not just something. No, it's a complete new creation you are brand new the old things are passed away behold all things well, I, I want you to celebrate right now all things all things all things well i feel that all things all things all things have become new have become new amen i want to preach for the next little bit uh on these two words right here what's next what's next I, I'm, I'm a i'm a what next kind of guy I, I i one of the greatest joys in ministry is to help you find your next and help you take that next step i'm i'm really more of a tour guide than i am a pastor in the sense of i just like to just lead you and really i, I want to lead you to greener pastures I walk through I walk through the valley with you but I want to encourage you if you're in a valley today that on the other side of this valley there's an anointing there's a table that's set for you come on somebody God's got can, can I be a tour guide today and to tell you come on there's there's more there's more what's next let's go to God in prayer Lord we thank you we worship you God on this first Sunday God we tithe the first of our month we show up to your house God I'm asking you, Lord, let the spirit of wisdom come into this house. Let a spirit of knowledge come into this house. Let us see what all that you have for us and give us the courage and boldness to take next steps. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Y'all did a good job. You can be seated. Thank you so much, worship team. Thank y'all. 
Amen. Uh, M said this, Easter was tremendous, tremendous. Somebody say tremendous. Tremendous, tremendous terrific. Uh, here last week, and, um, and, and we haven't did a post yet. We'll, 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 get, we'll get an Easter post out either today or sometimes first of this week. And, uh, but I rejoice. We have four that I know is going to be baptized. We'll start off with one, and then you, you know how it is around Hope. We, people just get on board. You start doing something. And Hope Church, let me brag on you and tell you, you're that kind of church. When you see something working, you, you get behind it, and you start working it. And that's, that's why we have what we have. That's why we feel what we feel here today, because you, you, you get a part of what's happening. We well, anyway, start off one, two, three, four, and then, um, then, then on, in, in the second service, didn't know we was going to have a baptism, and a note was sent up, or someone just told me, hey, somebody's going to be baptized in the 11 o'clock service. They were there in the 915, and man, we're baptized. And I'm just telling you, the Spirit of the Lord just was in this place in such a powerful, powerful way. Amen. Easter Sunday, and so many people gave their hearts to Jesus, rededicated. But um, we gave out uh, Connect cards, and this is something that I, I'm, I may be bringing back um, on more Sundays, uh, where everyone gets a Connect card. Because, you know, I, 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 I'm not convinced that people do not want to take next steps. I believe sometimes they don't know what steps to take. And so I just want to constantly make it clear. And so if you see that, come and we, you start uh, getting a connect card, just, just don't throw it away, but look at those steps and also that prayer request. Let me tell you about prayer requests here at Hope Church. Hope prays. Like, I, I want to just tell you something. If you, if you really trace things back uh, to Hope Church, it's always going to come back to prayer. I mean, it's always going to come back to a praying church. I mean, we, we have folks come down Wednesday morning, 6 a.m., and, um, and, and, and they're praying. I believe, uh, uh, I know on Saturdays and uh, praying every Saturday, 9 a.m., 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Uh, you can walk in. Uh, whosoever uh, will, let them come into the prayer room, 8 o'clock on Sunday mornings. And, uh, and, but that's, that's why we feel what we feel, and that's why it's just, it's just been uh, the, the, the atmosphere is set. The table is set when you walk in here. Amen. They've done chased off every single devil that even attempted to come around. I mean, it's like, I mean, get out, get out, get out. Y'all know how that is. And, uh, but uh, from the cards, we had uh, six people uh, take some next steps, and I rejoiced with that. We had uh, 12, uh, 12 Connect cards come in. Uh, these are first-time guests that we got cards on. And then at the 915, now this is including, including our children uh, at both services. Uh, so 171 at the 915, 208 at the 11 a.m., guys. And I'm just telling you, that's a record attendance when you put both of those together. Come on. We had y'all hearing me right now in a, in, a, in a Monday staff meeting. This is what I do. I just go measure all this stuff. I love, I love numbers because it tells you. It, it's just like this. You say, well, man, why talk about all these things? If you got in your car, you're going to look at those needles, and it's going to tell you. Come on. It's going to tell you where you're at. And so we're just looking at some things. And uh, we had 30 Dream Teamers and, uh, that served on Easter. And I, I want to just tell you this. I'm, I'm so excited about it. And uh, now, if I was a staff meeting, I'd say this, 30, we could have easily had 50 or 60, amen, to serve. And so I'm just telling you, the harvest is great. We need more laborers. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so, man, this is, this is so exciting. And um, we have 164, 100, yeah, 164 individuals that is plugged in faithfully going into life groups every week and man let me just, just just pause right here and just say thank god come on somebody thank god it's a healthy healthy church healthy church and so i i want, I want to just convince you today i, I want to encourage you today to get planted get get planted and uh, i i said this the other sunday and, and i mean it and uh because my heart is just I, i'm just this convinced I, I told you if you were not comfortable inviting someone to Hope Church, then go find a good church that's Bible teaching and believing that you are comfortable inviting them because I, I believe that is part of our Christian responsibility and journey to be evangelist, to be evangelist. And so let me just say this, and I don't know when to leave. Matter of fact, I want more to come, but I, this is more so to make a point 
than really, uh, that I don't even want to say it because I'm just that pastor just saying, come on, come on, come on. But if you can't get planted, because here's the thing, you know, it's, it's, it's tumbleweeds out in Texas. They just, they just blown everywhere. But you look at a sequoia out in California, those things will be there for 100 years or so. Those will be fruitful. Those will multiply. Those will be beautiful. Those roots will go down. And those roots, the reason they stand is those roots keep on going until it finds another tree. And it locks roots. And I'm just telling you, you can't get, it, you, you really are not going to be the strongest version of yourself until you can get rooted. And then your roots go off until you connect with another believer. And you connect. And then it's like if you bring me down, you got to bring the whole forest down. Yeah. Come on, somebody. That's the benefit of having a church family. It's a ch church family. And, uh. You know, I know we, we all have wonders and, 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 and people kind of float and shop, and, and I get that. But I want to encourage you to get planted, get planted. Find you a local church that you can get planted in, and I promise you, you'll see God do incredible things. You will flourish. I don't know if you know this or not, but, but in America, there's a part of our country that is called Death Valley. Now, this is not LSU's stadium. Uh, this is actually Death Valley. Death Valley, hold that one second. I'll call for that in just one moment. I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a dramatic kind of deal in a second here. You got to pull that. There we go. There we go. I want to kind of bring this, kind of be a little, little dramatic here in a moment. So Death Valley is, is the hottest, is the hottest uh, driest place in America. Nothing grows there at all. In fact, uh, nothing grows there because it doesn't rain. That's why they call it Death Valley. In fact, and I've got this in my notes, I want to show you a picture. Watch this. Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. You see that? See how that happens? It lands. Y'all, you are a church that gets behind things. I appreciate that. It really means a lot. And a lot of you have been laughing at my jokes, and I have taken notice. I have taken notice. I have a little black book at home. I write your names down. I pray double for you during the week. Lord, bless them. Be with them. Be with them. So... Uh, just here's a snapshot of Death Valley, but a uh, phenomenon happened in 2004. In the winter of 2004, they don't even really know how it happened, but seven inches of rain fell in a short amount of time. Now, nothing happened immediately, but in the spring of 2005, there was a phenomenon, and you can put up the next picture on the screen, and everybody, this is what happened. The same place that was dry and barren began to look like this. And so the conclusion is this, that Death Valley wasn't really dead. Death Valley was dormant. So right beneath the surface of the ground were actually seeds of potential that just needed to get into the right environment for great things to happen. Anybody know where I'm going now? Amen. Thank you, media team. Y'all are awesome. Y'all are awesome. And so really the fact, the fact of uh, the matter of this, the goal of this message is to help you to identify where you are at. And really, I, I want to talk and give you some steps and give you some stuff where you can say, oh, yes, that's, that's, that's my next step. And I, I can step into that. I, I can keep growing and flourishing because life isn't supposed to be dead. Your life isn't supposed to be dormant. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I mean, he wants that super bloom in your life. He, he wants that for you to flourish. And, um, and so uh, I love this verse in Psalm 16 and 11. It says, it says this, you will show me. So, all right, Lord, I, I want to see this. I want to flourish. I, I, I want all that you have for me. And so I love how kind God is and and Psalm 16 and 11, it says, Lord, you will show me the path of life. And really, a life is a lot about a path than it is just where you're at, but it's what pathway are you on? And, and, and life is more about direction than it is speed. Some people are going really, really fast. It's kind of like the guy who got in a taxi, and he said, go, 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 go faster, go faster. And the, so the taxi driver was just flying, going about 80 miles an hour. About 15 minutes later, the guy leaned up and asked the taxi driver, he said, do you know where we're going? He said, I have no idea where we are going, but we're getting there really fast. And so sometimes we're going really fast, but just pause and get a direction. 
get a direction. And I'm telling you, then every step will count. It says, in your presence, that's why we gather together. In your presence is fullness of joy. Not just a little bit of joy, but fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Man, that's beautiful. So that's what God has for us. Now, um, several years ago, I, I, I went on a personal journey of really a discipleship journey, and I was really determined to make it simple, make it where it would make sense. And a uh, matter of fact, I spent about three years and just was working with some other people uh, just to really bring this about and have this discipleship journey. And uh, someone told us this, and, and matter of fact, Emily and I were gathering up three ring binders, and we were putting personality assessments uh, from, uh, 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 I forget where exactly we got the personality assessment, but I know we got the spiritual gifts assessment from uh, John Maxwell. And so we were putting this binder together, and we were going to meet with every single person individually. And, um, and so at that point, we're pastoring about 350 people or so. They're at my um, grandparents' church, and, and I was just, man, I was going to meet with everyone, go through this. And someone said, Joel, what you're really trying to do, there's a church in Birmingham, Alabama that is doing something very similar to this. And I walked in, and, and it's called Grow Conference, and they, they really just laid out these steps and y'all I literally and I, I literally just begin to weep and begin to cry because I said it's just like what I've been trying to figure out for three years and, and Emily now what we put together so far this was all just laid out just so beautifully and it was a systematic thing and and so what they did they even took it a step further they said okay this is really a discipleship process it's, it's, it's justification sanctification it's deliverance it's, it's all these church big words that that if you've been around church a long time and you study theology, you know these things. But if you go out into the world or you haven't studied theology and been around church all your life, if I walk up here today and just say, you know what, we just need, we need justification. Uh, you need to be justified. You're like, you know, justified did what? You know, it's like, what, what are you talking about? Sanctification. Like, what, what is that? And so what Church of the Highlands really did, and they do it, did it so well, is they brought some language, and they, they actually did a study. They, they, they uh, paid people to just, just people out in the world and the culture and said, all right, what are some words that we can put around this that you can get behind? It's like, you know, instead of me walking up and asking you, uh, do you want to be delivered, let me ask you, do you want to find some freedom in your life? And people were like, yeah, man, I want that. You, you want justification in your life, or do you want to know God? Know God. And so really, that's where these, this language come from, and it really represents a discipleship process here at Hope Church. And so we really, we've taken the wording, and uh, we use it, in, 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 and, I, and I love the wording, and we're going to keep the wording as, as long as people can resonate with it, and it works. But I'm telling you what we will never get rid of is a discipleship process. Because I believe that God has called us to be disciple, be disciples, and also to disciple others. And so what does that look like? like what, what's next on my discipleship journey? Now, when you study the Bible, you will find this to be true. In, in early as Exodus, and you'll find it all the way through Revelations, there, there are four things. There are four things. And I kind of gave you a cheat sheet right there on the back wall, and, and you'll see it when you, when you drive up. But these really are four things that God really has for all of us. And in these four things, you will see a discipleship process really unfold. And, and I, I really could do a whole series on this. But today I want to give you some snapshots of this. Now, Paul... Paul really said this as a prayer, and this prayer really brought these four steps of discipleship process all into this prayer, and I want to show it to you. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, here's Paul. Now, Paul was a church planter, and, and I, I'm just telling you, if you want to get around someone who has an entrepreneurial spirit, get around a church planter, because you, you, you've got to have some entrepreneurial spirit. Also, you got, if you're a church planner, you got to constantly ask what's working, what's not working. And so Paul was really this guy. He would go in and plant churches. And so he was really, he was really a systematic guy. He was a disciple, discipler. He, was, he, he, he rose up uh, a leaders. And so here's Paul. He says, I keep asking the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, that he may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So what Paul is saying here, Paul saying, it's really my prayer that you get this. I want you to get a revelation of this. 
and, 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 and really all of us, we are all on a spiritual journey. But where are you at on that spiritual journey and what is next? What, what is next for you? He says this, he says, I want, I want you to get the spirit of wisdom and get a revelation, revelation of what God all has for you. And I, I'm going to really hang out on this verse uh, for, for a while, Bree, so you can kind of just keep it, keep it right there. He, he says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I, 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 I want this, and Hope Church, I, I, I want to say this. I know Paul's saying it. I want to say it just from uh, your pa- being your pastor and being a pastor in this community. I want you to get this revelation, what all God has for you. Then the first thing it says, that you may know God. That you may know God. Now that word know there is, in the Greek, is gnosko. And it just uh, simply means this, is, is that you may not just know God here, but you may have a personal relationship with God. That you may really just not know about him, but you, you, you have a relationship with, it, uh, with God where it's intimate, uh, which is really foreign to some, some people because they think it's just all about rules and relationships or, or rules and, 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 and just uh, 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 traditions, but it's not all about that, and all of that's not bad, but really God is after that relational component. Know me. Get, let's, let's, let's know each other intimately. It's like a, a husband and wife that has a family, not, not in the sexual way, but in the intimate way where I know you. I know you. In January, Emily and I celebrated 20 years of marriage, and, and I'm just telling you, it gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. She gets prettier and prettier, and it's just, uh, and it just runs in her blood. Her mama's pretty, her grandma's pretty, her aunts are pretty, and tell them I said that. And uh, it just, I was looking around there at dinner, and I uh, was eating fried fish with a bunch of pretty ladies. I mean, that just can't get any better in life for a Mississippi boy than that right there. And uh, Grandma Mimo, 88 years old, and, uh, but you know, it's just, you, after time together and going through some things together, you, you know each other. I, I, I know, I know what she's thinking a lot of times, or I, I think, I think, I think, say that. <laughs> Who among us men really know, really, I mean, really. <laughs> notice, I, I'm preaching, I've got to be honest, I mean, it's like, uh, now, now, I, I want to, if I have time, I want to come back to this other word, so, to know God, and that's really, that's that salvation moment, and that's that relational, and, but I want you to really see this right here, that you may know him, everybody say better. So some of you, you know God, so you're saved, but you really, you're qu- you quit pursuing him and you quit growing in him. So the, the goal is not just to be saved. The, the goal is that you know God more, that you get closer to God. And so, so th- this discipleship process at Hope Church is not just saying, okay, well, you saved, well, you you know, there's, there's no more for you. No, there's more God to know. There's more freedom to be had. There's more purpose to discover. Come on, somebody. There's more difference that we can make. That you may know him better. And then the second thing there, look at this. So this is really the know God, the, the, the fine freedom part. He says this. He said that your eyes, the eyes of your heart get enlightened. This is the second step in your spiritual journey. And Paul actually says, I just wish. He says, in the message version, he says, I wish that your eyes could get focused and clear. And so I want to tell you this, that this, this process right here is a progression. See, you really can't get to a point where your eyes is focused and clear if you do not know God and have an intimate relationship and just have a personal relationship with God, a growing relationship. So this is progressive. And then he said that your eyes of your heart, you're like, well, wait a minute, Paul, my eyes are up here. No, Paul says, I meant what I said, the eyes of your heart. Because, in fact, a lot of us, we can look at the same thing, but because of our past hurts and pains, our, our, our mountaintops and our valley, valley lows, we look at things differently. We look at things in different lens because our heart sometimes can have a lens of hurt. We can have a lens of pain. We can have a lens of victory. We can have different lens. 
So Paul is saying this, I want you to know God and know him better, but then I want you to get your eyes clear so that you can see things from heaven's point of view. I want you to know him. And so I just wish you could see all, all, all the important things. He said that God has this so that, and you see the next one right here. And again, I want to keep saying this, that it's a progression to know God, then to get our eyes clear so we can get past and we can get through some things. And uh, then the third thing, he says this, he said, he says so that right here, I, and so that, that you will know the hope to which he has called you. So that word hope, you can, it's just, you can put calling right there. So he will know the calling to which he has called you. And that's where you discover your purpose. You see, when you know God and then you find some freedom, you're not, you're not looking at things just through pain and through the past and through the struggles, but now your eyes are focused and clear, then you can really see the calling that God has for you, the purpose that God has for, for you. And then it goes on, and man, I, I, I love this here. And let me just say this. When you realize that you're on a spiritual journey, you'll realize that God has purpose for you. He has called you on purpose for a purpose. And I'm telling you, when you get to this part of living with God, it starts to get fun. Amen. Because it's like, man, I'm, 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 I'm filling out. I, I'm doing my purpose. We have shirts here at Hope Church that says, I was made for this. It was just made for this. And, and I look at our kids department and to all of our kids team, I just tell you, you were made for this. Some 70 plus kids were in the, uh, the kids, uh, 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 kids church last Sunday. Come on, somebody. You, you can build a church like that. The greatest investment a church can make is, is, in, it, is in its kids. And so I'm just telling you, you're made for this. And to all of our teams, I, I don't have time to go through all that, but you're, you're made. You're made for this. But then it says the next thing here, and I love this, it says, the hope which you have called you, the riches of his glory, inheritance in his holy people. And in this next part, it says you will be able to live out all that God has for you, but it, but it brings an element with other people. So it's not just making a difference, uh, just me and my uh, just family or just, just me, but it's saying, no, I get to make a difference with a whole church body. And when we come together, guys, there's just nothing impossible when a church is unified and a church is making a difference and a church is saying, look, it's not just about us, but it's about others. It's about people who are not even here yet. Amen. I'll show up. I will pray. I will study. I will uh, do a life group. I, I will be a part of a life group because there's others that are not saved yet. There's others that are saved, but they're stuck. Amen. There's, there's dream teams, leaders that are rising up. Why, why are you putting so much time and volunteering so much time? Because you want a place for people to discover and live out their purpose. Can the church say amen? Amen. amen. So um, let me kind of work through these a little bit. And, and, and the first thing is know God, to know God. He said, I, I really, the first part of this in verse 17, he said, I want you to know God better. He said, my prayer, he said, I keep on asking God that you may, may know God better. And, and this is a verse I, I want you to just, man, you could pray on, look at this. But the Bible says in Matthew 7 and 21, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. So it's more than just saying something. It's moving into that relational. It's really, and it really comes down to this one word, surrender. It's really surrendering to his lordship. And that's where last week I, I, I really just kind of highlighted something because I think sometimes people really want a salvation journey or they really uh, uh, present a salvation journey without the death of repentance. And I'm just telling you, without repentance, you, man, it's just you can't get to that victory. Because the way we're a new creation is repentance and the old things can pass away and we're buried with him in baptism. And then we can raise up and we, we walk into a new life. So it says, not everyone who say, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Then I would tell them, he said, look, depart from me. I never knew you. So in other words, there was not this relationship. You may have known about me, but there was never, I, I was never the Lord of your life. Never Lord of your life. And so I, I just want to encourage you that this is important. 
It's important to have a relationship with God, to bring, bring him near and dear to your life. Um, Philippians, and I'm going to do a little bit of teaching here. Philippians 2 and 12 says this, therefore, and, and there's that other word, so you, you, was it therefore? You'll see something and then it'll say, therefore, because of what I just said, here, here's the conclusion, my dear friends. Have you, he said, you've always obeyed not only in my presence, but also in my absence. He says, continue, everybody's saying continue. Continue to work out your salvation. Now, let me talk to some saved folks in this house. Work out. Work out your, your salvation. And, and, and I love this. Philippians, in the New Living's translations in 2 and 12, it says this. He says, and now, I, I, he said, I, I'm away from you. He said, you're still, you're still doing great. But he says, work hard to show the results of your salvation. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Philippians 2 and 12 there talks about work out, and then it used the word trembling. Now, if any of you have, that have literally worked out lately, it's, it's been a minute for me, but last time I worked out, and I was trying to max out a little bit, I was working out with a whole lot of trembling. <laughs> it's, just, it's part of that, that work out. It's just, but it's getting stronger. That tension is bringing strength. And so in our salvation... It's not just this one and done thing. It's like, no, I want to grow in Christ. I want to know him better. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. I want to know him in the fellowship of, of his suffering. I want, and I'm telling you, it's hard. Emily and I have been married for 20 years. If for 10 years we didn't speak, y'all, let me tell you something. We wouldn't have what we have right now. If I went a week, if I went a day without speaking, Someone, the other day, someone just from the community walked up to me and said, she said, I don't know if you, you, you felt me just staring at you and your wife walking into Sam. She said, but I just stopped and I just stared and watched y'all walk all the way in. And I walked behind y'all for a while and just watched. She said, y'all are holding hands. Y'all are laughing. You're talking. I'm like, yeah, I'm, that girl's about to feed me. And I'm like, yes, we are, yes. I mean, like, buy that and that and that and those chips. Oh, my God, how mercy is the will of God, that dip. Yeah. But, you know, if, if I didn't talk to Emily, we, we, would, we, wouldn't just, we wouldn't be able to share that intimacy and just that love and just that common. And so I'm just telling you guys, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. Tell him all about your life. Come on, somebody. I mean, just have that little talk with Jesus. Have that relationship with God. Work out. Work hard for those results. Now, speaking of Emily, Emily said this, and I quote her. And uh, we were talking, uh, heading home yesterday, and uh, I was telling a little bit about what I was feeling in my heart. And, and Emily said this, and I told her, I said, send that to me, text it to me. And I, I don't always give Emily credit. Uh, normal times, I'll take the credit, but I'm going to give her the credit on this one. Talking about Christian maturity, for some, it's time to, to take a stand. So in your, in your no God, for some, it's time to take a stand. In Ephesians 6 and 10 it says, finally, be strong in the Lord and, and in his mighty power. Now, some of you, you are saved, but, but man, you have not worked out your spiritual muscles in a while. And some of you, you have been just going in your own strength and you're trying to make it just on your own. And the Bible never, it never tells us that we've got to work all this out just by ourselves. And we've got to just know. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Then it says, put on the full armor of God. Everybody say all of it. All of it. All of it. All of it. Full armor of God so that you can take a stand against the devil's schemes. So I want to start preaching to you for a minute right here. It's time for some of you, you are saved, but it's time for you to take a stand against some stuff. I mean, it's just like, look, you have racked anxiety. You have racked addictions. You have brought all these things in my life. And devil, today is your last day. I'm serving an eviction notice. I'm taking a stand against this. Take a stand. Learn how to take a stand. Now, if you haven't worked out in a long time, you don't need to go wrestle Cade. 
And, and so a lot of us are there. We, we haven't worked out, worked out our salvation. We really haven't got into the word and, and our prayer life and just really some spiritual disciplines. And so when the devil comes in, we're like, you know what, just come on in. Take, 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 take it all. Take, I mean, take the TV, take the dog, take, I mean, take it all. It's going on because, I mean, you just haven't developed those, those, those muscles. And I'm telling you when, you, when you start to take a stand, it's going to be a fight, but it's a fight worth having. It's a fight worth having. Just, and some, some of you, it's, that's your next step. Take a stand. Draw a line in the sand and say, you know what, no more, because the battle begins where the line is drawn. And so some, it's, it's time for some of you to put up guardrails. And it's time for some of us to learn how to put on the full armor of God and dig down deep and get some spiritual roots. Amen. To get planted in the house of the Lord. And so I'm not going to go through all the armor, but again, Emily uh, said this, and I thought it was so powerful. She said, you know, some, some folks have the helmet of salvation, but they have not put on the uh, breastplate of righteousness. And so they are saved, but their heart is exposed to things. Y'all think I come up with all this stuff. I'm just telling you, I, I listen real good. I ask good questions. And it's right. But it, when Emily said that, I thought, I said, that's, that's so, so powerful. You know, some people, we, man, was like, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. But our heart is wide open to anything that just comes in. So we, that's that righteousness that is right living. You know what right living does? It keeps things from getting into your heart. That's good preaching right there. I mean, it's, it's just right righteousness. And we can't stand in our own righteousness, but there are some things that when we read the Bible, don't read it as thou shalt not. Read it as don't hurt yourself. Like you may be saved, but don't go commit adultery. Don't hurt yourself. Don't, don't destroy your family. Don't, 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 don't get mixed up. Don't, don't go murder someone. Don't, don't go lie on someone and, be a, and bear false witness. I mean, just, just come on. Let's move into right living, righteousness, so that our hearts can be protected. Oh, hallelujah. For some, it's time for you to take up the sword of the Spirit. How's your relationship with the Word of God? Word of God. It's like this. I, I, and people tell me this often, and we're living in the day of you version, which I mean, it's, it's so many versions, and things are so incredible with the Word of God. Um, and and but people say, you know, I, I just don't understand this. I don't just. I, it's just hard for me to understand this. I heard a story of this girl one time that read a book, and she declared that it was the worst book she had ever read in her life. Fast forward some twenty years. She went out on the date with this guy, and they were sitting on a park bench looking out over a beautiful lake, and some ducks and swans were swimming. And as they got, was getting to know each other, he looked, he said, you know, a lot of people don't know this about me. He said, but I actually, I wrote a book years ago. He said, I, she, oh, can I read it? I'd love to read it. Well, she got it. She read it. And at the end of the book, she, had decla she declared that it was the best written incredible, insightful book that she had ever read in her life. It was the same book. What changed? She got to know the author. She got to know the author. And I'm telling you something, this will start making a whole lot more sense the more you get to know the author. Come on. Get to know this author. And I posted the other day on, on Hope, Hope uh, Community is this. There's over 3,000 promises in, the, in this Bible. And I, I, if you ever look at a document there, there's hyperlinked. And sometimes you'll be reading a blog or you're reading something, and there's a little blue line, and you can double-click on it, and then it brings you to the original source. Some of you need to double-click on some promises in your life. Yeah. I, Come on, Nancy. Some of you need to double-click on some promises and say, I'm going to know God better this year. I'm going to find some freedom for God because he promised it. It's mine. It's for, it's, for, it's, for, it's for me. So get a relationship with the Bible. The Bible said, how shall, in Psalms 119 and 9, how will a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to the word of God. Psalms 119, 105, it says, your word is a lamp into my feet, a light into my pathway. I will tell you today, I don't know where I would be 
if I could not pray and if I did not have this. I, I'm just telling you, I am dependent on prayer and the word of God. I, I just, I'm, daily, I am dependent on prayer and the word of God. It is the anchor of my life. It is the source of my strength. It is my light. It is my salvation. I'm in love with the author. And this is the living word. It comes alive in my heart and in my life. Woo! Every promise. Lord, if you can do that, if you've ever done that, Lord, you can do it for me. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So, so your next step, what's next? It may be starting a Bible plan. Start here. Give 15 minutes of your day. Five minutes of reading the Word. Five minutes of writing down just your takeaway from what you're reading. Then five minutes of prayer. What will happen is that will keep on expanding because you'll start to long and crave that. Maybe that's the that next step. It's like, hey, I, I'm saved, but, man, I, I, I'm really, things, I, I feel like there's blinders, and I feel like there's things just coming in my life that's just, just, just clouding my vision. Let's go back to some basics. These basics work. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you this. I, I won't be able to, to teach on this a lot, uh, but uh, I, I literally have 2 Peter 1 through 11, and I'm just going to hit verse 5 right there, Bree. Verse 5. Get a revelation of this right here. Y'all see what I highlighted? If you get a revelation of this, it'll, it'll be a game changer in your life. Add, add to your faith. It's like, it's a good place to start, but it's not a good place to stay. It's like, hey, I, I'm saved, okay? All right, then let's move on. Let's take some steps. Add to my faith. I encourage you to write this down and go through all of this. Like, like, really, do a study on everything it says to add. Take it. You can take it one a week, one a day, and just say, all right, I want to add this. And you know what this add to faith? Some moral clarity. The next thing, add to your faith. That goodness there is some morality. Some morality. You know what America needs a lot more of? We need to add to our faith some morality. People say, well, I am a Christian, and then they put something that's very immoral on that second time, I'm like, I, that, let me just tell you something. Oil and water don't mix. Light and darkness don't mix. I mean, I, I, I just, I'm just telling you, I just, that, that just don't go together. And so, but I think, I think we've just had so many people that have become, how can I say this kindly? Because I'm a kind person. Um, biblical, biblically illiterate that we've really had to dig in so strong on the basic elementary things of just getting people saved and I'm telling you we're never going to move off of that mark but for some of you your next step is to add to your faith some morality and then add to your morality some goodness some knowledge my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge they, they don't have no understanding knowledge is power Knowledge, add to your knowledge, and then add to your knowledge. Is it self-control next? Go ahead, put this on. Add to the, aha, boy, I'm good. Right there, self-control. <laughs> self-control. And add to your self-control, perseverance. So in other words, it's not just a week, but anyway, I, if, I, if I start teaching this, I, I can't do that. But I, I encourage you, just, just, just take that, start there. If you know God, if you're saved, then oh, hey, there's your faith, then let's move to some morality. And just ask yourself this question. What, God, what are some things that you are speaking to me in my morals? Is this okay? Is this good? It's like, God, what are some areas, God, that I can get closer to you and I can please you in my morality? And then move. And there's a reason that it is in order here. So don't, don't just go to the faith and then move to the self-control, but build on these things. It's, it's intentional. Is this helping anybody here today? Yes. Doing a, lot, a lot of teaching here today, but... Um, now, one of my first lessons, not my first message, but one of my first lessons that I, I, I taught to some students was this verse, 1 Corinthians 13 and 11. Mr. Dassey, you can come on back to the keys. Give them hope. 1 Corinthians 13 and 11. Do you have that, Bree? Thank you. When 
I was a child. I spoke and thought and responded as a child. But when I grew up, I put, I put. But let me tell you something. People can't put it away for you. I put away childish things. And so my topic to those students was this, graduating to the second win. Graduating to the second win. It's like, all right. When I was a child, I spoke like it. I thought like it. I reasoned like it. But when, but when I grew up, and I, I just encourage you to grow in Christ, grow mature in Christ. If you're the same place that you were six months ago in Christ, I want to encourage you just look and say, okay, what, what next step can I, can I, can I make? And I, I don't have time to go through all these, but that know God and the, into growing in our know God, I really felt to just highlight that today. And I love that Paul put better there because it's not just about, okay, I, I'm, I'm saved, but it's about knowing him better. But the fine freedom part, let me just tell you this. Here it is, guys. A lot of us, we, we need, you've taken that step of no God, but on your spiritual journey, you have not taken this next step of freedom. And there are just things that are holding you back, and there's things that, that's keeping you from being the best version of yourself. The good news is this. There is a solution. The bad news is not just God. It's not just you and God, God set this emotion so that said this, if you really want to find freedom, it's going to be with others. We go to God for, we go to God for forgiveness. We go to others for healing. Get in the body of Christ. That's where healing. You find it all through scriptures. That's why we have life groups here at Hope Church. And so, you, you may not be able to just but you may not be at a point where you can just be honest with everyone in your group, but find someone. Maybe you can do a one-off in that group and just say, hey, I want to talk to you because there's some things in my life. There's some blinders and there's some things going on. I want you to pray with me. And, and put this scripture right there. You're like, wait, wait, wait a minute, Joel. You say that, uh, put, put that find, find freedom there and go to James, that next verse. It says this, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be, look at that word, Healed, healed, healed. I need you. You need me. This comes with transparency. And so life groups is not just something that, that we just do. It's, it's, it's who we are. And, and, and you say, well, man, you guys have uh, Bible study life groups, and uh, you have some things that are really, really deep, and then you have some things that's really, really shallow. I heard people just throwing ball out there with each other. Well, if you don't have your spiritual lens on, you in fact just see that. But a lot of times, if you just look at me and Cade, you may think I'm just throwing the ball with him or we just throwing the ball. But no, man, we're having conversations sometimes. We're connecting. There's, there's things that, it, that is happening. And so you get in those environments where we can take the mask off and we can be real. I don't care if that's over a chessboard or a checkerboard or a disc golf or in a freedom Bible study, or a chapter-by-chapter chapter Bible study. I'm telling you, on Friday morning, 6 a.m., man, we got men uh, gathering at PJs. We've got uh, freedom groups that's happening, three different freedom groups that's happening. My living room is full every Sunday of student freedom. And two Sundays ago, if I, if I got these students to come up here and testify, they would testify and tell you, after the freedom was over, for 45 minutes, the students stayed at my house crying out to God, being filled with the Spirit, prophesying, gifts being poured out. I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you, this just, this just works, this works. This works. We come, Emily and I come to a Wednesday night uh, a service, a uh, student service a couple weeks back. Emma was, uh, uh, the, gir the girl just preached. I mean, the girl laid it out, man. She did such a great job. But afterwards, there was an altar call, and I looked up, and every single student, guys, check this out. Every single student in the house, and they had a great crowd, every student just come down to the altar, crying out to God. Some was down on their knees. Some was uh, standing with their hands up. Some was just, man, just, just, just laying on the altar, crying out to God. They were not rushed. They did not just rush things out. 
but lives are changed. This is what's happening here at Hope Church. It's, it's, we, we gather in, in rows here on Sundays, but we get healing in circles. It's important, it's important, it's important to find freedom to clear. He said, that the eyes of your heart. Then he said that you may know the hope. That's that calling, that calling, that calling. And for some of you, it's time to step into your purpose, and, and I, I'm concluding today. Let me give you some low-hanging fruit right here, and the next thing is making a difference. Let me give you some low-hanging fruit. For some of you, your next step is to get on the parking team, to get on the dream team. So, it's, it, man, it's really exciting what all God's doing at Hope. When you look at way north of 300 on a Sunday morning, I'm, I'm just blown away. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm literally just so blown away by what God did Easter. I mean, it's just, it's, it's we're, we're living the dream of, of, of just what God has for us. But, you know, it's easy just to kind of become a spectator and not be a participator. But I'm telling you, we could have easily had 60 people on the dream team and needed every single one last Sunday. Maybe that person, maybe that person that needed to be connected to was not able to be connected to because we, we didn't have a team. And so low-hanging fruit is to, is to just join in, join the dream team, and just lean in. I want to tell you a story because that's, where most, that's how most great life lessons are learned. Let me tell you a story. And I also want to bring your attention back to me right here. I, I know you heard that. I know that I know. You know that I know. You heard that. So I heard, heard, heard this story, true story, happened out in Florida. It was at a dog race. I've never been to a dog race. I'd love to go to one. But anyway, uh, it was a dog race. And, and it's unlike horse races because a horse, horse, horse has a jockey on it. And the jockey is telling it where to go and motivating it uh, to go faster. But the dogs, what they do, they will put a mechanical rabbit on, on, on kind of like a track. And, and these dogs will chase after this rabbit. And they were just going. They are just going around and around. And the person who said that was there said it was just, it was incredible. It was exhilarating to see how dog, these dogs were going. And they were going after this mechanical rabbit. But he said something happened. He said the mechanics, the mechanical rabbit malfunctioned. He said, and so the track just it fell off track, and he said the, the little rabbit got caught in the track, and he just, it wasn't a live rabbit, but it was a fake rabbit, and he just, poof, just went. He said, three things these dogs did, and I'll tell you, this is what we, we'll do as humans also, but he said, the, the dogs, they did one of three things. Some of the dogs just laid down, took a nap after, after, after the rabbit was, kept, uh, was going, and then the second thing, some of the dogs did was turn around to the spectators and just begin to bark, begin to bark. And then some of the dogs, some of the dogs literally ran through the rails and would hurt themselves because they had so much energy and they were just jumping through things. When we do not have a purpose in running towards something, we will either just stop, take a nap, and just give up, or we will bark and yap and complain and talk about every I'm preaching right now we'll bark, bark, bark it's like where's your purpose at? you've got too much bark where's your purpose? or we'll hurt ourselves looking for a purpose so I'm telling you come on, what's next for you? what's next for you? God's got a great plan for you God wants you to flourish I want you to flourish the greatest joy in my life. The reason hope is called hope is so that people can have hope that there's a better day. There's something greater for you. I want, I want to pray with you, and then I'm going to let you go. I did not intend to uh, preach this long, but Emily gave me so much good material. Just had to cover it all. Amen. Living for God gets sweeter and sweeter. Can I get an Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's don't be a Texas tumbleweed. Let's, let's be a sequoia. Let's, let's, man, come on. Let's get some roots. For some of you, Emily said it. It's trusting God. It's trusting God. Trusting God in the area of your finances. We're not a church that does the pressure thing, but I'm just telling you, 
if, you, if, if, if you're not being faithful in this area of your finances, you're missing out on a tremendous blessing. Trust God. Trust God with your family. Trust God with your emotions. Trust God. Get plugged into the local church because I'm telling you this, and, and, and I'm finishing, the local church is God's idea. The local church is the hope of the world. The local church, and we're part of that today. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you say today, say, Pastor Joel, I want to know God more. I know that there is more for me, and I want you to pray with me today. I want you to slip your hand up right now. That's you today. Just say, I know there's more, and I, and I want all that God has for me. Just slip your hand. I've got my hand up right now. Come on. It's, it's okay. Look, all of us really should be kind of just moving that hand up right now because I want all that God has for me. Our, our prayer team is coming down front. And if you want prayer for anything, our, our prayer team will be available to pray for you. They'll also be available right after the service if you'd like to come give them a prayer card or, or they, they'd love to pray with you. But let's go to God in prayer. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my life. I repent of my sins. God, come into my heart. Lord, I make you the Lord of my life. I believe, I believe that you died for me, that you were buried and you rose again on the third day. God, I believe that you can change my life. Lord, I receive your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Can the church say amen? For the rest of us, why don't we stand to our feet right now? Come on, let's go into that posture of surrender. These altars are open. Come on, why don't we lift up our hands right now? Open up our hands. Come on, surrender all to God right now. Come on, Lord, I give it to you. I give all of it. I surrender all to you today. God, you are better than life. Lord, you are better than anything. Oh, there's nothing. Come on, sing it out. Better than you, there's nothing. Better than you, there's nothing. Nothing is better. Oh, 